for for those that are less familiar or just learning or getting up to speed and maybe more traditional discretionary or um, you know old school so to speak investors, um, what are LLMs and and uh, and what is generative AI uh, for novices? Um, who likes to take that one to start? Anyway. I, really? I could go a little bit. I mean, so, so, so generative AI or large language models in particular uh, allow you to work with textual data, right? And so when I speak to model providers and I speak to software providers that are building the orchestration layer for large language models, they're saying that the data they're working with, textual data, has never been databased for the most part, right? So there is probably as much unstructured textual data out there as there is structured data, except the unstructured textual data has not ever been database, never really been used for systematic processes, right? So that's sort of the, the, what LLMs or large language models allow you to do, at least in part, is work with uh, textual data, uh, of which there's a lot, and be able to process it and extract meaning and value from it in a way that is you know, somewhat revolutionary, right? Because it doubles the amount of data, at least, that we're now all able uh, to work with. Any, I mean, that's sort of one explanation, but feel free to follow up. Yeah, who, uh, yeah go on, Martin. Hey, so think about LLMs. They're called large language models. Like this kid that you take to college, take through different stages of school, learns all languages. It spends so much time understanding languages. And then now you can train to specialize in some kind of area. So LLMs are models that are built or trained on a huge corpus of data script to the internet and other places. And then once it learns the language, uh, it's fluent enough, then you can now get it to do things like you can ask it questions, you can grant in context and tell it to do some things, do some summarization and stuff like that. That separates itself from uh, uh, ML, which is a method of building, one of the many methods of building models like LLMs, which is machine learning, which is the process of just taking uh, like teaching a dog new tricks. You, you show a dog, you tell him, this is what I want you to do. And when you look at this, uh, this is what it means. You show it a few examples, and then it, it doesn't, it, it takes, you test it on it, see if it does, it learns. And then that becomes the model. Thanks. Do you want to add something, Satish? Uh, I mean, just to extend his kid's analogy, I just want to make it even more easier to understand Yes, I mean, generative AI is, is, the, the by, uh, is the overarching thing. Like you have AI, you have deep learning, which is a subdivision of AI. Now you have generative AI and large language models are a subdivision of generative AI, right? And, and just to extend this kid's analogy, it is creative, right? It is not anymore the existing one, but you are trying to create something new uh, with, the, with the LLMs. And, because it is creative, obviously, it is unpredictable, too. So I just want to leave that thought. Anything you want to add, Daniel? Sure, yeah. Um, so I always like to try and develop an intuition with, with an analogy. I, I like yours. Um, but in preparation, I, I did what I'm sure most would do. It's, I asked ChatGPT for an analogy. <laughs> and uh, it came back with something I thought was pretty cool. It said, uh, AI is like the chef in the kitchen. Machine learning is the cookbook. The data streams are the ingredients. Generative AI is like a talented sous chef that's a little bit egotistical. It doesn't want to follow the recipe book. It wants to come up with its own recipes based on its understanding of the ingredients. So I thought that was apt. To extend on that a bit, I, I'd say the uh, benefit of being able to go uh, off recipe book is probably also the, the biggest risk it's as good to go a little bit outside the recipe book, to be way off the recipe book, probably uh, a, little, a little dangerous. Um, and then I would also say, of late, generative AI and language models, particularly large language models, have become very intertwined, but they're, they're very much not the same thing. Uh, generative AI is about generating new information based on the training set data some prompts. Large language models are about understanding language and, in most cases, assessing the probability of a particular sequence of words. So one of the non-generative AI uses uh, is to assess the likelihood of a, of a particular string of words, which could be uh, hard-coded in a sense, right? So, for example, if you were to train a language model in 2018 based on data up to that point, 
and then use it to assess transcripts of earnings calls in 2020, it would pick up on terms like coronavirus and COVID-19 as very improbable words to appear in a transcript. And so it turns out the improbable language that appears in news and regulatory documents and transcripts of, of calls, um, that usually tends to be the most interesting. Uh, so very much uh, separate concepts. I'm sure we'll get more into it.